They're eager to build new relationships, romantic and otherwise. But with the pandemic taking its toll on the mental health of so many, how do we as a community move forward in this new era of dating? Joining me to talk about this and much more is Spicy Mari. She is a relationship expert. She's the CEO and founder of The Spicy Life. And she is a bona fide relationship guru that's going to answer all of these <laughs> questions. Mari, let's start. <laughs> let's, be, let's be honest. This is a new world we live in now. Like, the whole world is different with, with, with social distancing. Uh, you got guidelines. You got masks. You got virtual meetings. Uh, how has that affected dating over the last year? I think that people are starting to reevaluate, right, their priorities when it comes to relationships. I think before we took for granted interpersonal skills and human connection and contact and affection, and now people are starting to have these epiphanies and wake up calls, especially during this quarantine time of, oh my God, I really need to learn how to put myself out there and take risks. I need to get the relationship and dating skills. And honestly, because of it, the spicy life has been more successful than ever because people are starting to become more self-aware and understanding that it's not just the world, it's also them as well. Mm. It's so fascinating to me because I, I imagine that there are a lot of people during COVID who were in relationships that they couldn't end, right? Or <laughs> they were in relationships of convenience, right? Like, I ain't got no crib, you do. Normally this would be a passing thing till I got a crib, but there's no cribs to get. So I'm going to have to ride this relationship thing out for an extra month or two or six or 12. Uh, are we seeing a lot of unhealthy relationship stuff going on? There's a lot of realizing a lack of compatibility, right? So because people are reassessing their values and whether they wanna be in a relationship long-term or not, they're starting to second guess who they signed up for. And also if their needs are really being met, does this person or this relationship serve me anymore? And so when you're stuck in a house with someone for so long, you start to realize dang, we really do have communication issues. We really don't know how to do conflict resolution. And so you're starting to find different things that you didn't notice before because you actually have to sit there with the person and pay attention now. This has been a great time for research, I would say, in your relationship and really discovering self and compatibility. Uh, let me bring in uh, Jay Barnett. He's a family therapist and an author. Hey. Uh, welcome to the show as well, you guys Jay. Doing? Uh, Jay, I'm trying to figure out that, you know, we're going to talk about what dating is like post pandemic, but I'm just trying to understand because I got a lot, a lot of viewers here that still ain't left the house yet. And they found out about six months into the pandemic that their girl's favorite color was blue. You know, like, like it was something they should have knew already, but they figured it out as time goes on. Like, I know her middle name now, you know. So when that happens, is it also possible to think about the pandemic as an opportunity to repair or heal or grow in our relationship? Or is it just going to be amplified, whatever is already there? No, I think it's a great opportunity to reassess your um, relationship. And then too, look at the terms that you have through your relationships. And I think that one of the things that the uh, pandemic gave all of us is an opportunity, not only just to assess our relationship, but also assess where we were in our life and to, as Spice said, to assess the, the choice that you made in the individual that you either been married to or you've been dating. And I know in our practice, we've seen an uh, increase in couples coming in for couples therapy mm -hmm. because there's been an increase in divorce. And believe it or not, divorce has also been initiated by 76% by women compared to 60% yep. last year. So I think it's a great time to evaluate the relationship, but then to, to assess. Wait, wait, say that, say that number again, Jay. Jay, say that number again. That, that sounded so, important. Say that number again. You said... <laughs> So, so divorce um, rate has increased, but women are initiating divorce rate at a higher percentage. Uh, the, at that number is 76% compared to 60% last year. That is fascinating. I guess with us home more, it's much easier to be like, you know, I don't like you that much. You ain't got nowhere to go. You, you, there's no gym. Risk the COVID. I don't. You, you just do it. Just go to a basketball court or gym. But it's like now that we're home, we're a lot less interesting. There's a deep yeah, desire it's, it's a for happiness. Go ahead. Sorry. A desire for healthiness. Well, well, sometimes getting rid of a trash dude is the way to do that. Let's let's talk about mental health also on a different level, Jay, because we know that mental health also impacts our ability to be social and the impact is greater in the black community. For example, 
like um, if you look at the National Alliance on Mental Illness, they have a statistic that says basically 30 percent of African-Americans with mental illness will receive treatment each year compared with the U.S. average of 43 percent. So we're seeking treatment less. What does that mean in terms of the, the impact on our relationships? Well, it, it impacts our relationship in a great way because uh, I say most marital problems are single people issues. And I think a lot of times when we go into relationships, we don't realize that we're taking a lot of trauma, we're taking a lot of unresolved pain, mm -hmm. and we're taking a lot of unprocessed pain into relationships. And a lot of times there's a lot of mental health issues, uh, illnesses and disorders that has manifested from the things that we've seen. I mean, even when you think about uh, just what we've had to endure with the George Floyd case, uh, that secondary trauma is probably going to cause a lot of anxiety within a lot of black men. Um, that anxiety is also going to impact how we operate and function in relationships. And so I think uh, in the black community, what is important that we begin to remove that stigma by not only uh, just going to therapy, but also making it uh, one of those things where it's a part of our lifestyle, because I truly believe that your mental health determines your quality of life. And that's going to determine and enhance your relationship experience, because now you can identify what's healthy and what's unhealthy. Uh, Amadi, I know we're going to get to this dating stuff moving forward, but I just got one more question, because yeah, I don't get too many here, dating experts like y'all here. <laughs> you guys are, you guys oh, you are. Y'all, y'all, y'all both getting this. snapping. Y'all both are. <laughs> y'all both are, man. It's amazing. Uh, Amadi, I, I know, but I'm just saying I want to get to this next thing, but I got just one more question for y'all, which is about fidelity. I mean, do you think that in a moment where people are forced to be in the same crib all the time, does that increase fidelity? Does that make people realize, hey, maybe I can do this monogamy thing? Or does it have people itching as soon as they can bust out that door, they get that vaccination, they in them streets again? <laughs> oh, you're asking, is it going to be a hot girl summer? Um, <laughs> so when, yes, it, when it comes to, indeed. when it comes to commitment, <laughs> When it comes to commitment, that is your own personal pursuit. Either you're someone who values commitment or you don't. Either you choose and want other people in your, you know, to, to experience or you want to be in a committed relationship. And so being trapped in the house doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be um, unfaithful as soon as you get out. However, I think that people are craving relationships right now. They're just craving interpersonal communication, contact. I think they're craving affection. And if you weren't getting that from your partner, then that could lead to someone else getting attention or you giving your attention away. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna go wild out and be unfaithful. So the, the assumption that you gotta hold on tight to your partner now that the doors are opening, <laughs> you should have been working through uh, intimacy this entire time during COVID. And similar to what he had just said, you know, doing really a relationship recalibration and like, okay, what do we need to work on? What do we need to heal? And how do we target these things? before we have access and exposure to a ton of other people that are now gonna infiltrate or possibly be distractions in the relationship. So yes, focus on your relationship, not so much on if your person's gonna be unfaithful or not, because that's you then operating out of fear. And that's huge and problematic when it comes to anything in your love life or relationships, is we start making decisions out of fear versus love. Jay, I know some dudes that be in these streets. The women need to be moving from fear. They need to be operating from a place of terror if they trust in these dudes. I'm yeah. just saying, Jay, would help me out here, brother. Listen, listen, uh, man, uh, this is why I'm, I'm my mission, you know, is, is to help black men heal. You know, I'm working on a tour right now uh, titled uh, Just Heal Bro. And Just Heal Bro is going to give men of color an opportunity to not only to just come together and talk, but to give them a space, man, to begin healing. Because I think in order to, uh, to help the black community thrive, we have to start with black men. And let's be honest, there, there's a lot of brothers out there that are, are unhealed, that are broken. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, males that have a lot of boy tendencies. And a lot of those tendencies stem from their childhood, stems from their daddy wounds, and it still stems from a lot of rejection and abandonment. And so you're, you're right, and, and, and these boys are creating a lot of broken relationships, but then also they're creating a pattern of, of issues that are going to be seen through their children and the generations to come. So I yeah. think it's important for us to begin that conversation of, of allowing black men and men of color to begin that healing process 
because when brothers begin to heal, we're going to make better decisions and we're yeah. also going to impact the lives of the women that we're connected to and it will impact the lives of our communities and our children. All right, so we definitely need to heal. We need to deal with this untreated trauma. We need to grow. We need to address these issues head on. We need to trust each other. I hear all that awesomeness, right? But we got some viewers out there that don't want to hear none of that. Not because they disagree, but because that's not their circumstance. They sit on this couch. They got that second Moderna. They got that second Pfizer. They got that, 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 that MLK Avenue, Johnson & Johnson. They ready to hit them streets right now. They vaccinated. They taking the masks off because a lot of cities are making it up so that you can't even California saying you could do it in about a month. So when they hit these streets, people are like, I want to date, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna start with you, Marty. Dating is a little different now. People have been dating on apps. People have been having meetups yeah. over Zoom. People still ain't comfortable sitting in people's space. What does dating look like in the new normal? So in the new normal, you're right, it is different, right? We have all of these safety concerns. We're starting to use technology more, getting more comfortable with that. Um, now requiring that people have, you know, COVID tests or the COVID vaccine prior to going out and feeling really, you know, more comfortable being in people's proximity in their space. People also are experiencing the anxiousness or the anxiety around the fear of dating. And so there's one thing that still plagues us that was here prior to COVID, which is a fear of rejection. People still struggle with how do I speak to this person? How do I make the initial contact? How do I follow up? How do I come off you know, vibrant and interesting? And so people really need relationship coaching more now than ever. And you know, similar to what Jay offers, I won't even allow my clients to work with me at the Spicy Life or match anyone unless they have received therapy first or unless I assign them a therapist. So, you know, mental health is important oh, wow. with this, you know, aspect of putting yourself back out there because you need to be fully confident, ready to shine because people are ready right now more than ever to meet people. They're just a little bit afraid. So once again, that fear creeps in and it holds them back from like being the best version of themselves. So there's work to be done, right? And that's why I provide the relationship coaching at The Spicy Life so that they can get the tools and methods to like succeed right now. They don't need to keep using COVID as an excuse not to date. Mm, I don't know, Jay. Some people have been using COVID as an excuse not to date. No, I hear that. And I, and I understand the idea of using the spicy life to get some, some training before you go out there. But, you know, a lot of folk going to go out there, you know, Rambo style. He's going to hit wow. the streets and just holler at everything. <laughs> or they're going, going to do it right. Or they're going to do what they was doing two years ago, pre-COVID. And it's a new world out here. What are some things we should be wary of, Jay? I think uh, we, we, we should be wary of people who are rushing um, to enter back into the dating space. Um, I like what, what Spicy said is that, you know, she encouraged her clients to not only have a therapist as they're working with her, uh, you know, uh, on, on coaching them, because I think the coaching part helps you with self-actualizations and then therapy yep. helps you with self-awareness. So I think it's important that be weary uh, and be leery of individuals who are rushing to enter back into the space of dating. I think uh, the pandemic has given us an opportunity or hopefully that it's given most an opportunity to kind of evaluate when you begin to entertain certain energy and certain individuals. And, and then to be honest with yourself, be honest about mm -hmm. uh, the, the hookups, be honest about the engagement, but more importantly, be honest with yourself. If you're not looking for anything serious, be honest, because let's be honest. And, and you're right. There's a lot of people when outdoors open back up, they're going to revert back to their old habits. They're going to revert back to their old regime. And so I think as important, more so than worried about how others are going to act, it's important for you to be uh, conscious of how you're going to respond when others act yeah. how they are. So, mm, I like how that sounds. All right. I want to thank you both for joining me. Jay, Marty, y'all are the best. And you can check out Marty's consulting company at www.thespicylife.com. You can also learn more about Jay's work and purchase his books. Letters to a Young Queen, Redefining Their Throne, and Hello King, Claim Your Throne by visiting his website, kjbcoaching.com.